Hey friends, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are going to get a reset for our thoughts today. And I'm just gonna tell you, I'm gonna give you a few little disclaimers as we jump into this topic. First of all, um, I feel like I have, I feel like I could talk for about a month straight on this topic, just from all the things that the Lord has done in my own life and I'm still on that journey. Um, I'm still learning, I'm still growing. I'm just sharing with you out of the abundance of the things that I'm learning in my own life. I haven't perfected all of this <laughs> by any stretch of the means, um, but I'm so, just so grateful, so grateful for the things that the Lord teaches us through his word. And um, when we choose to have the intention of growth and when we choose, um, learn to choose our thoughts, really. Um, so first, the first disclaimer is I'm trying to cram a whole lot of stuff into one video that doesn't last five hours. <laughs> so, um, secondly, I'm still right there with you. I'm still on the journey. I haven't perfected any of this. Um, so let's dive in. Um, I'm looking around at all my notes. I have books out. I love this topic. I love it. But it's a lot. Like, we're going to keep learning about this until we get to heaven, right? We're not going to have any of this journey perfected. So none of that um, beating yourself up or feeling shame about where you are on your journey. We're all on a journey. And we live in a broken, fallen world. And so... Um, we're, we're, we're still a work in progress. And aren't you thankful that he doesn't give up on us? That he has told us he will keep working on us. He's going to finish what he started, right? Okay, so Philippians 4, 8 tells us what to think about. It specifically says, think about such things. But how many of us follow that? <laughs> how many of us really... There's a whole lot of verses in here that would help us to live more joy-filled lives. And I think we read them and we think, oh, that's not for me. Or, oh, I'm not capable. But right here in God's word, we are told to think about such things. And what things are those? Things that are true are the things you're thinking about and meditating on and letting replay in your mind, are they true? Are they lovely? Are they noble, right, pure, and admirable, and praiseworthy? So um, I always used to hear people talk about, change your thoughts, change your life, and I thought it was a bunch of hooey. Like, I really did, y'all. I honestly just thought this is the biggest crock of just like, psycho babble <laughs> or something until I started learning how to do it and my life started changing and I had to like eat my own words you know what I mean so um Philippians 4 8 confirms that what we are thinking about matters, right? God's word is not silent on what we should be thinking about and filling our minds with. And I want you to consider this analogy for just a minute. You know, we talk about filling our bodies with good stuff. So if you, we're, we're gonna, this is a little soapbox I'm not gonna go off on today, but one day later in the week, we're gonna be talking about what we fill our physical body with if we fill our physical body with junk, what are we going to feel like? Junk. If we fill our minds with junk, what are we going to feel like? Junk. We are the gatekeepers of our homes. What are we filling our homes with? 
What are we letting, allowing into our children's minds? What are they watching? What are they reading? What are you watching? What are you reading? What are you putting into your body? What are you putting on your body? What are you allowing in your home? What are you allowing in your mind? It all matters. We are the gatekeepers. We get to choose. We get to decide. I want to fill my mind with truth because when I don't, I feel like junk right? When I fill my physical body with junk, I feel like junk. It's the same way with our minds, right? Hey friends, thank you so much for hopping on here today. Say hello in the comments. So when we dwell, this is, this is another thought that I used to think was a bunch of junk. So first of all, I thought change your life, change, change your thoughts, change your life. I thought that was just for other people. I thought it was just like Psychobabble. I don't really know. That word keeps coming to my head. I don't know if something better to call it. Um, but here's something else that I used to think was crazy. When people would say um, what, what you give your attention to is what, like what you're thinking about, that's what happens. Or what, um, if you dwell on this, if you dwell on abundance, you, oh, there's a bug on my phone. Interesting. Um, <laughs> so I used to think that, you know, whatever, but I want you to, I want you to think for just a minute with me. If you choose gratitude, if you're thinking about your blessing, let's say you're just actually right in the moment, you're writing down, you decide, I'm going to write down what I'm thankful for today. And you start writing down, I'm thankful for my home, even though it's not perfect, just because we're gra grateful doesn't mean we're like negating the fact that life is not perfect, right? We're choosing to see things differently. So let's just pretend we're writing down the things we're thankful for. I'm thankful for my home. I'm thankful for Maple. I'm thankful for my children. I'm thankful for my husband. I'm thankful for my front porch. I'm thankful for the gym that's helping me get stronger, even though most days I hate it. I'm thankful for God's provision in my life, even when it wasn't always what I thought it would be. I'm thankful for the sunshine. I'm thankful for the flowers. I'm thankful for, thankful for fall. Guess what? The more you think about your blessings, the more blessed you are. I don't mean monetary financial gain. I'm not saying think about your blessings and you're going to have a million dollars fall in your lap. No, it's even better than that. The more you think about how blessed you've been, the more blessed you feel and the more blessings you see. When you open your eyes and you choose to see the good and all the ways God has been faithful in your life, what do you see more of? You see more blessings. So it tr it's true. <laughs> what you think about is what's happening. So the more I think about the gifts and the blessings and the good, the more blessed I am. Right? Oh, I love it. And I used to think that was such a crock. But I just want to encourage you. This is going to be this is going to be some tough love for a minute. This is what I want to say to some of you and this is what I had to say to myself, honestly, and I still have to say it sometimes to myself, okay? So, buckle up. I think this is maybe the most harsh thing I'll say all week. After that it'll be all encouragement. <laughs> okay. Stop saying you can't. Does anybody else fall into that bad habit? It's become a habit. What do we know about habits? We can change them. We can create new habits. We can create new habits and kick the bad. Is it easy? No. Some of the hardest things I've ever had to do. Changing up here was harder for me than losing 60 pounds, if I'm honest. But you have to quit saying, I can't do this. I can't change. I was born this way. I'm just a sad person. You know what those are? Those are, those are victim thoughts. And when we stay in a place with a victim mentality, how does that leave us feeling? 
terrible, terrible, but we aren't victims. We are more than conquerors. So you get to choose. You can stay there. I can't do this. This is not, I, I just wasn't, I, I just, I was given this depressed personality. I, I can't, I'm just prone to negative thinking. It's just who I am. You can choose that. It's your choice. And for a, a long time I did. And I might still fall into that. Sometimes I'm a wallower. You guys have heard me talk about that. My, I can be a wallower. For hours, days, weeks. <laughs> I can do it. But I've learned that it gets me nowhere and it leaves me feeling miserable. And I had to get to a place where I decided I don't like feeling miserable anymore and I can do something about it. I have a choice. I can keep on thinking my life is terrible. I can keep on thinking my marriage is terrible. I can keep on complaining about my home and everything that's wrong with it or I can choose gratitude. I can choose to see the good. And, you know, we talked about making that list of the things you're grateful for. Your choice is you can keep making the list of the bad. Oh, my gosh, we need that bathroom is so old. My deck is falling apart. I wish the sink didn't leak. I wish that we could have, you know, this screened-in part over here on the side. These are all actual things that sometimes I struggle with, you know. And I can stay there. I can keep thinking about what my husband said to me that really just, you know, made me mad. And we're going to actually go through an example here in just a minute. Or I can choose differently. I can make that choice. The Bible is not silent on what we should be thinking about. The Bible tells us in Philippians 4, 8 that we're memorizing this week. So I hope you're memorizing that with us. I happen to have it memorized in the NIV version. You can memorize in whatever version you want to. The Bible, God's word is not silent on what we should be thinking about. He tells us right here, think about what's true, noble, lovely, right? So if you catch yourself, and the longer you practice this, the quicker you catch yourself. I promise, I'm a work in progress. I am catching it sooner than I did, like two years ago. As soon as you catch yourself with that thought, you have a choice in that moment. And you ask yourself, is this true? Is what I'm thinking true? Is it helpful? Is it admirable? Praiseworthy? Is it noble? Pure? Lovely? So God's word has a lot to say about our thoughts. God's word tells us we can take our thoughts captive. What does that tell me? We have some power here. We have the Holy Spirit living within us who strengthens us to do all the things that he has put in his word for us. He didn't just put things in here and say, oh, I'm sorry, that's impossible. I just put it in there just for the fun of it. No, no, he's given us the helper as the Holy Spirit who lives within us to strengthen us, to help us. But we have that choice, right? We have that choice moment by moment. God's word also tells us that change is possible. So, you know, a few minutes ago, I was talking about that victim mentality. And I, I was stuck there for so long. And I was miserable. Miserable. But God's word says that change is possible. You get to choose to believe it or not. You can read it and think, oh, that's not for me. I, I'm not good at that. I wasn't born that way. I wasn't born with this positive outlook on life. Um, so you can keep doing that. That's your choice. Or you can choose to believe that God's word is true and that we can be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Friends, believe it. We can be transformed. And that renewing takes work. And that's what we're talking about today. It's not always easy. And you know, we do all have per different personalities. 
I am one that thinks a lot of thoughts in a day. I have a lot of feelings in a day. My husband is not that way. So there, there definitely is personality that comes into play here. But God's word was not just written for certain personalities, right? God's word is for all of us. And I know because I have experienced it that when I choose to think through, okay, is that that I'm really upset about it? Is it even true? If I think through that, I come back to joy, right? Because I'm like, no, you know what? It's not true. What I was just thinking about what she said to me or what I see or what my husband did um, or the lies of the enemy, that's another huge one. If the enemy is telling you you can't change, that's a lie from the enemy. You get to decide you get to choose. That's not true. You know how I know? Because God's word tells me that change is possible, that I'm a new creation in Christ, that he's not going to finish what he started, that work in us, that he has a good plan for our lives, that we can be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Change is possible. So that's one of the biggest lessons that I have had to accept in my own life and choose to believe. No, I'm not stuck here. I wasn't created with a, with a messed up mind that can't do the things that God's word tells me to do. He didn't create me with like a, you know, he didn't wire me wrong. <laughs> um, but the journey... The journey, that's what it's all about. This learning, this growing, he's strengthening me, he's teaching me, he's teaching you as we learn to do this. Okay, so the secret to a more joy-filled life, honestly, is to believe that God in you, Emmanuel, God with us, he is with us, he has placed the Holy Spirit within us, God in me has given me the power to choose differently. And choosing to believe that might just change your life. Choosing to believe Romans 12 too. Okay, I'm going to believe it. I'm going to believe that I can be transformed by the renewing of your minds. No more victim mentality. We are overcomers because of the blood of Jesus. What we fill our mind with matters, just like what we fill our body with matters. We have to choose to believe that what God's word says is true. Okay, if you have the worksheets, pull out the one that says thought cycle. If you don't, just pull out a notebook um, and open up a blank sheet of paper. Now, if you have had any, if you've seen any kind of like life coaches, this is very common. This, I did not come up with this. <laughs> it originated from this book, Self Coaching 101 by Brooke Castillo. I'm going to put a list of my favorite books. I have five, uh, five books sitting here that have been pretty life-changing for me as far as changing my thoughts. And I'll put a list up after this video is over. Um, but this particular um, idea or whatever comes from this book, Self-Coaching 101. This is not from a Christian perspective, but by golly, Scripture backs it up because of Romans 12 too, right? So I love when um, science and God's Word collide. Um, so anyway, get your worksheet on the thought cycle, and we're going to talk through an example so you can see exactly how this works. And then your homework is to do one of these every day. The more you practice it, the more you're going to be aware and the better you're going to get at it, okay? So if you don't have the worksheets, that's fine. Just get a blank sheet of paper. So you're going to put down these five um, categories, I guess. They're not really steps. It's more like a cycle. And if you print it, there was actually two on one page, so that way you could do it twice on one page. Um, but you can also do this on a, on a blank piece of paper. So the top one is going to say circumstance. 
Next, it's gonna say thought, then feeling, action, result. So this is the thought cycle worksheet. Circumstance, thought, feeling, action, result. And we're gonna go through an example together, okay? This is not actually a true example because my husband, this is not something that I struggle with in my marriage. We have plenty of other struggles, but I just wanted it to be like a fake scenario, okay? So don't think that I'm really upset about my husband <laughs> with this. Um, okay, so here's the circumstance we're gonna walk through. You can do this for any thought you're having in your life, any circumstance that you're frustrated with, something that you just can't quit thinking about, Okay, so what's the circumstance that you're struggling with? Write it on the top line. Here's what we're gonna, here's my example. My husband always leaves his clothes all over the floor by our bed. That's the circumstance. Now, is that in and of itself? Okay, well, let's talk through it and then we'll come back to that. So the circumstance is my husband leaves his clothes on the floor. Here's the thought that accompanies that circumstance. He never helps me around the house. He must not care that I'm walking around here picking up everything off the floor. And I would make that mean he doesn't care about me. Is anybody else, is anybody else <laughs> with me? How does that thought leave you feeling? Frustrated, mad, like he doesn't care? Anybody else? So you have the circumstance, you have what it's making you think, what, what your thoughts are, that then leads to those feelings. So your thoughts lead to those feelings. I'm thinking, he never helps me around the house. How does that leave me feeling mad? Disheartened, he doesn't care, he doesn't see me. Then this is where it gets good. What's the action that we take based upon that feeling? Well, it can go one of two ways depending on your personality. You can either, either give the silent treatment <laughs> or you might lash out and say things you would regret. Tell me in the comments, are you a silent treatment or do you lash out? <laughs> I tend to be the silent treatment. So that's your action that you take based upon the feeling that you're feeling, right? You're mad. You're acting mad. You're slamming things on the table, or you're silent, you don't talk to him for a whole day or night, you go to bed angry. Y'all, what is the result of this? What's the result when we think and feel and then act on that original thought? It puts distance between us. It doesn't make me feel close to my husband puts distance between us, not more love, right? So here's what we do. We practice a new thought. So here's the circumstance. My husband leaves his clothes on the floor bes all beside our bed. Every day, his clothes are on the floor. Again, this isn't really true. I'm just, it's just a fake example. Here's a new thought you can choose. My goodness, my husband has been so stressed at work lately. He's been busy. He's had the, his boss has given him extra work to do. He's been stressed. He's been staying up late to try and get it done. How does that thought leave you feeling? Compassionate. Now you're feeling compassion because you realize, my goodness, he's been under all this stress. He's been extra busy trying to get all his work done and trying to please his boss. And I know he's feeling the pressure of that. And I am compassionate toward him. Now what action do I want to take? I'm compassionate. I know he's stressed. I want to serve him. I want to encourage him. I want to build him up. I'm gonna pick up those clothes because that's something I can do to support him during this stressful season. So I'm going to pick them up with love and with gratitude for the job that he has, for the boss that he has, that he's such a hard, responsible worker to work and provide for our family. 
Now what's the result? The result is I feel more love for him and we are going to be closer together instead of that distance when you're mad and when you're frustrated. Isn't that amazing? Like you get to choose that thought. You get to choose the thought. Now I'm not saying that original thought's never gonna pop in your head, right? Remember we're not perfect yet. <laughs> Someday, one day, when we get to heaven. So I'm not saying, oops, I'm not saying um, you won't still have, but, but here's the thing. The more you practice this, the sooner you realize it, and the more quickly you can choose a different thought, right? Because you know. And, and again, it's your choice. You can stay mad at your husband and miserable at your husband for the clothes on the floor. That's your choice. But I don't like staying there. I don't like being miserable. I spent 40 years being miserable. <laughs> I don't want that when it, that anymore. So when I know that, you know, I can choose differently. I can choose to see him differently. I can choose to be grateful for who he is and the job that he has. I can choose to see him differently and then I'm not miserable, right? But it's your choice. I mean, you can keep thinking all those bad thoughts about your husband or any, it could be your kid. It could be any, any, this is just an example. You can choose. I can keep thinking that I deserve that because I do everything around the house. I mean, how does that thought leave you feeling? It doesn't leave me feeling joy filled or at peace. So I can choose and I can stay miserable or I can look for a new thought and I can be thankful. That is so, so powerful, you guys. And I've had to do this in friendship. I've had to do this in parenting. I've had to do this in my business. I've had to do this in my marriage and I'm going to have to keep doing it every day until Jesus comes back or until I meet my maker face to face because we live in a fallen, broken world and because we're human and we're flawed, right? But don't stay there. God's word isn't silent about our thoughts, remember? So if he tells us to think about things that are true, what does that mean? We're capable of thinking about things that are true. He didn't just put it in there as a joke, right? We can be transformed by the renewing of our minds. That's another great one to memorize. We can be transformed. We can. That renewing takes work, but it's so worth it. Why? Because I don't want to stay in that miserable state. It's no fun living as a victim. I don't have joy or peace when I'm wallowing and I can't do this. It's not who I am. I just can't change. Things are never going to get better. My husband's never going to do this. No joy in that, but it's your choice. It is your choice. So print this off or do it in your notebook. Go through an example. Um, I would love to see your examples if anybody wants to put a screenshot, but if it's super personal, no worries. This was just an example for us to talk through. You can print off as many of these as you want to, or you can just do it in a notebook. Um, but this, when I first learned this concept, my mind was blown, blown. When I realized how much those thoughts were impacting my entire life. Because when you think it, you start to feel something. When you feel something, you act on it, right? So when you're thinking that about your husband, you're acting mad or frustrated or whatever. It literally impacts every single thing you do. So my encouragement to you today is God in you, Emmanuel, God in you has given you the power to choose. You have to believe it. You have to believe it and then you have to choose it. You have to choose to believe that we can be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And then we get to tell ourselves every day, you know what? I can do hard things. God created me with a brain to think, and I get to choose if I want to think about the lies or the truth, right? 
Okay. Um, 30 minutes. Well, that wasn't so bad. I told you guys I had like, could talk about this for months. I am going to put a list of my favorite books. There's one quote I want to finish with from this book, Switch on Your Brain by Dr. Caroline Leaf. This was another mind-blowing quote for me when I first, because y'all, I hope you don't hear judgment in my voice. Everything I'm saying to you, I've had to work through myself. In this book, um, she says that you're not a victim of your biology. I spent 40 years, I mean, probably not 40 years because probably when I was five years old, I wasn't thinking this, but I, I spent all of my adult years believing, and if you go back and read some old blog posts about depression, you will find this. I was just born this way. This change that everybody's talking about, change your thoughts, change your life, it's not for me. It's for other people who were born with different wiring. You're not a victim of your biology. If you start to dig into neuroplasticity, which is what Dr. Caroline Leaf's specialty is, and she, she write, does write from a Christian standpoint. The other book I mentioned is not, but they're both life-changing. Um, you know, God's word backs that up because God's word tells us we're a new creation in Christ. We can be transformed by the renewing of our minds. We can take every thought captive. Those things are in there for a reason, for our good, right? So I hope this has been an encouragement to you. Keep working on the memory verse because that's how you replace the lies with the truth, right? You have those things at the ready to meditate on. We're not wallowing on the negative. We're meditating on the truth. And then print your thought cycle or start a page in your notebook and do practice a few of those. Do one a day. Share a screenshot if you want to. The more you do it, the easier it gets, the more aware you become of your own thoughts, which is going to lead to more joy and peace. All right, guys, have a great afternoon. I will see you back here tomorrow.